Welcome back to Vintage Diecast Restoration. Um, up this week, I'm going to be working on a couple of my number four Matchbox Series steak trucks. Um, each of these has a few different issues. Um, this one, we've got just some, some bent tabs on the inside. Um, and then I've got a little sticker. I'm guessing this is from, looks like maybe a garage sale. It doesn't look like an original pricing sticker. Um, usually, and I, and I do have a few of these um, that have come with like a, a uh, toy shop or a big box store, you know, some kind of a, a sales sticker on the end that shows the original price when this was new. And I don't think that's what this is. Um, but as you can see, it's starting to peel off and it's starting to take the uh, Matchbox logo with it there. So I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, this one. Um, I am fortunate to have a couple of these that are mint or near mint in box. Um, this is one of the mint examples that I have. Um, and this box is completely intact. I've got no torn edges, no torn flaps. Um, but I do have another uh, sort of unusual issue. And that is I don't have a clear area here at the top where that fold is supposed to be. And so what ends up happening is when this gets folded up and put away, um, you can see this kind of starts to mash and mold. Um, and it doesn't fit real tight because there's not a clear crisp edge on that. Um, so my plan with that is I'm actually gonna reinforce that on the back side uh, and then come in and press or set uh, a new seam, a new joint in there. So it's really more, um, kind of preemptive, I guess. I'm, I'm trying to fix an issue with the box and prevent it from getting any worse. Um, and then on this last example, you can see, I've got just a very small tear right here in the corner of the box. Um, don't want it to get any worse, don't want it to rip any further. So we're gonna go ahead and repair that as well. So up first, uh, we're gonna tackle this uh, first box with the sticker issue. And I think uh, my approach or my method to try to remove that is one that I've used in the past, and that is lighter fluid. Um, so to kind of get that going and get that set, um, I'm gonna take just a very small amount of lighter fluid. and soak kind of the end of my Q-tip right there. And I'm gonna work, since we've already got an edge that's pulling up, I'm gonna start working from that edge down. And you can kind of, you can see it as it penetrates in underneath that label. Um, the lighter fluid's great for a couple reasons. One, it doesn't make any of our ink or anything run. It seems to only affect the adhesive. Um, and two, it evaporates. So even though I've got this kind of dark spot, this stain that's kind of running around the edge, um, once, the lighter fluid is allowed to kind of go off and, and evaporate. Um, all those stains will disappear. So again, I'm just gonna reapply a little bit of lighter fluid. I started working it from this edge that was up already and I noticed that I'm actually peeling more of that label off. So I'm gonna come down here on this other end and see if I can start working under that edge. To do that, I wanna get it really saturated. I wanna make sure that that whole sticker, that whole little adhesive that's there is uh, thoroughly saturated in the lighter fluid. And I'm gonna start from a fresh corner up here and I wanna be really careful. I don't wanna force it because any little catch or edge um, or if that adhesive is not completely worn away, um, I'm gonna tear it and I don't wanna do that. The, the goal with this is to remove the adhesive or remove the label, but leave the original box and the printing intact. So you can see I'm getting a little bit of an edge up right there. This is a fairly tedious process. Uh, it's one that requires a lot of patience. Um, and I have failed many times in really trying to get this to work. So get a new little application. I've also noticed that different labels are different, um, especially some of these older labels that I think have had some time to sit. 
um, and that adhesive is really bonded very well. Um, it takes a lot more time and a lot more patience and uh, more applications, but it will eventually pay off. So as you can see here, we've got a new edge starting to come up. So as soon as I get that, I wanna make sure that I continue to apply the lighter fluid. Keep dissolving that sticker as I go. So I'm gonna work it back and forth on that edge. I'm gonna pull a little bit more, kind of work it down slowly. And like I said, I don't wanna to pull too hard um, so if I pull too hard, I'm going to tear the label or I'm going to tear the paper on the surface of the box. So it really takes a lot of patience, um, just slowly working at that adhesive and getting it to dissolve. All right, so that was actually really quite difficult uh, to get that little label off. I think it had been there an awful long time. Um, and you can see I was able to preserve all of that printing except for that little piece. And that's the part that had already been um, taken off by whoever had tried to peel up uh, that label. So uh, a few other issues that this box has, you can see it's been creased or bent here in the middle of this flap. Um, and then we have this other inner flap um, that's bent over. So I'm gonna use, uh, again, my very scientific complicated method to fix that. Um, we're going to use a regular standard clothes iron uh, with our medium setting on there. And we're just gonna press this. I wanna try that first and see, see how much of that gets fixed just with you know simple heat. Um, and pressing that. You'll also notice that um, on that end flap, as it's had a bit of time to sit now, um, there's not any staining left from our uh, lighter fluid. That's It's all already evaporated off. So um, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so we just finished pressing our box. Um, that little wrinkle that was kind of in the middle of this flap has been nice and flattened, straightened out. Um, I think as long as we are a bit careful with it as we fold it up, um, we should be just fine on that one. So that end's done. I'll go ahead and we'll take our model. Like I said, this is one of my near mint models. Um, and we'll put it back into the box and fold it up. So up next, um, our box with the half torn flap. Uh, so as I kind of got into this thing, got a little more critical with it, um, you can see obviously this tear. I also have a minor tear kind of on the corner of the inside flap there. That one's not bad enough. I, I don't think at this point that I really want to repair it. Um, but you can also see on this end flap where it's starting to tear. And when I look in the inside of that flap, uh, it's actually a lot worse than it, it looks like from the outside. Uh, you can see how most of that paper has kind of deteriorated and worn. Uh, this box has been open and closed many, many times. So I think um, that this is a spot, not that I need to repair, but that I wanna go ahead and reinforce 
um, just to keep it from uh, tearing further than it, it already has. I, I don't want it to tear. So we're gonna add just a little patch on the inside there just to further reinforce uh, this flap that hasn't torn yet. So in order to make our flap repairs, uh, we're gonna use the standard paper tape method that I've shown you in other videos. I'm gonna clip off a little piece for us to get started here. Um, again, links to purchase this are down in the description. Um, so I've got a piece. The first thing I wanna do is take a look at this end flap that is torn. Um, I'm gonna use my standard method. That's where I'm gonna take kind of the factory edge of the tape, line it up on the edge of the box. I'm gonna fold this back because that gives me a line where I know that I need to cut. And so I'm just gonna be very careful. I'm gonna cut right on the inside of my fold line. I can see, especially across this top and this bottom, that I'm nowhere near close to square. Um, so I'm also going to trim up at least one end to try to get a little bit closer to what I think is gonna be square. And then I'll do my test fit dry fit in the box. Um, again, I want to probably come up to uh, some area in the box where it's a little less noticeable that this has been repaired. Um, and since we've got a good strong end flap here, I think I'll stop it right at that inside crease. Um, it seems to fit just fine, dry fit. Um, I don't need it to go all the way inside the box, so I'm going to trim this up. Um, and again, I find usually they're about a half an inch to maybe about two centimeters inside of the box is uh, a good place to stop that. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim up my paper tape in order to get it to stick. I've got a little kitchen sponge. I'm gonna add just, see it doesn't take much. If I get these too wet, um, it takes a long, long time for them to set up. And if I get them too dry, uh, they don't wanna stick. So it, it takes a little bit of practice to kind of get used to exactly how much adhesive you need. So now we're gonna come back to our torn end flap here. I'm gonna lay that side down. And as I put the paper tape in, you can see I'm, I'm actually not worried about what's in the box as much as I am worried about lining up the end of the tape with this end flap of the box and making sure that that all looks right and square. And I usually work down one side of the tape and then I'll slowly work across. Um, remember this is very sticky so you kind of get one shot at it. Um, don't worry if you do get a little wrinkle or roll in it um, or you don't get it set right exactly where you want it the first time. Um, all it takes is a little bit more water and you can get that adhesive to let loose again and you'll be able to pick that up and adjust it with your tweezers. So, gone over it one side or once from the back side uh, just to get it a little more damp, make sure I've got all of that adhesive activated on there. Um, so that side's good to go. On this other side, as I said, there's not actually a tear, um, at least not on the outside, it hasn't torn. Um, but there's a lot of deterioration and damage on the inside of the box here. So all I really am looking to do is prevent that from tearing any further. Um, you see that this looks a little short this way, so I may have to go this way with it. Um, and I'm just looking for, in this case, actually a very small repair. Um, and. I know it's going to be seen. I'm not going to be able to hide it in one of the sides of the box, but I really feel like in this case, uh, the nature of what it is, that just that little piece um, hopefully is enough to reinforce right in that joint. That actually looks pretty good right there. So the next thing I'm going to do is just dampen that up a little bit, again with my sponge. There we are, and lay that down flat so I can kind of see what I'm doing. Looks pretty good. 
press that in place. There we go. And then while I've got my damp sponge, I'm gonna go over the back just a little bit more just to really get that set. So a little bit crooked on that one. Um, not that worried about it. Um, it's gonna be inside and it will serve its purpose to reinforce that joint. So the next step, um, like all of our models, is to give this a quick hot iron, get it to lay flat, and to set off the glue on all of our repairs. Now that we've got our box pressed, it's had a chance to cool. Um, all of our glue's gone off on our repairs. Um, this one is ready to reassemble. Um, I did do a quick check on that tear on the outside to see if I was getting any, uh, any bits of the paper that were pulling up. And this one doesn't appear to be doing as much um, what the last box was. So I'm not sure if we just got more uh, stuck down to that paper tape or if that tear just was at a different angle or not as bad, but um, I don't think I'm going to do any further repair on the outside of the box on that joint. Um, so this finishes up box number two of our Lesney number four state truck repairs. So the last box, if you all remember, um, is this one here. It's very, very close to mint. Um, the only issue I had with this box was this kind of double fold at the end of the flap. And I wanted to see if I could reinforce that, if I could fix that. Um, again, it's not a tear. There's nothing wrong with the box otherwise. So the first thing I'm gonna try is just to press it flat and see if I can remove some of that memory that's in the, the fibers of the cardboard um, and see if that is enough just to press it flat and then set a new bend in there and then iron in that new bend. Um, if that doesn't work, uh, unfortunately I may have to back this or reinforce it uh, a little bit with the paper tape just to try to keep that fold um, in the center section. Uh, it's it's kind of hard for me to want to do that. Anytime I get something that's mint and original, um, I try not to mess it up. So I'm hoping that just pressing that is enough to fix that and that it doesn't need any, any further reinforcement. had a chance to press this box and um, what I actually used was just a very uh, thin straight edge, a little piece of metal uh, from a, a putty knife, from a drywall knife um, to kind of lay down and then that allowed me to kind of press over that edge um, and since that metal is so thin it allowed me to press a really nice um, creased edge into that end flap that kind of had the double fold on it. Um, so now you can see inside and outside there's a very nice crisp edge, which I'm very happy about because that means I don't have to um, do any repairs or, or uh, change this otherwise a perfect box. Um, so all we have left to do for this one is to go ahead and fold it up. Um, and since this is my best box, uh, I'm going to pair that with my best copy of the number four steak truck. 
Um, so this is the best one I've got. Um, I don't know that it's absolutely mint or not uh, perfect, but definitely near mint. Um, no deterioration, no oxidation on the base, still nice and shiny, no chips on the paint. Um, very pleased, very happy to have this one in my collection. Face it the same way he is in the box. So this completes our little mini restoration series on the steak truck sections. Um, those three different boxes, three different issues that we've successfully been able to correct. So tune in next week. Um, don't forget, forget to uh, like and subscribe our page. Um, and as always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section for me. I do read all of the comments that I'm getting, um, and I would love to get your feedback and see what future projects you might want to see from me.